starting to the top right of Atlas, we have our Zerg player. He is... KT Roster Crazy. Crazy uh, won the first game today, the first map. Lost against his opponent, the bottom left on map number two. The Protoss player for Wounding Stars calls himself... Wounding Stars Fly. Both players, 22 years old. Yep, both coming from Code S. And Setting the camera hotkeys here. Yep. I'm excited to see what we're going to get on this one. Uh, on Atlas, we've got cross positions here. And the map is, is relatively large as well. And with the layout of the map, it's really similar to what we just saw uh, in game two. There's a lot of ramps, there's a lot of different choke points where you're going to want to set up your swarm host and make sure that you don't get caught. And I'm just wondering if Flying is going to show us airplay again or if he's just going to hit with a gateway time. He goes for a gateway expand, that much is known. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see a bit of a gateway timing, but the problem for him really is that we have the cross positions on a huge map like this. So if he tries to the gateway timing, it will be delayed by a bit. But it all comes down to the, the scouting of Crazy. This is one of those maps where we've seen a lot of timings in the past. And it's actually funny to see that Crazy this time goes into the spawning pool first. He does not try to take any chances on this map. Not going for the hatch first that we've seen him uh, build on the last map. Yeah. And as a result, you know, his economy is going to suffer slightly, and he definitely could have gotten away with it against the Gateway Expand. I think if he knew about the positions, he would have. Yeah, I agree. Um, he's not going to scout with a drone, so he's not going to see that it's a Gateway Expand until very late. And the Overlord's, of course, scouting the wrong direction because it's cross-spawn, so... This could actually affect this game quite a bit. If Crazy plays a greedy build here and tries to go for a third hatch before he sees what's going on, that, that could really hurt him. I don't think that's what he's going to do, but we have seen Zergs do this in the past. Just take a greedy, risky third. His scout is just very late because of the position that we have. He sends out a few Zerglings now, but that's definitely an issue for him. As a Zerg, usually when you think your opponent starts with the Forge first, you want to get your third base roughly around 420. That's the normal timing that you will see the third hatch. But if your opponent starts with the gateway, then you really don't want to get that third base. Because if you do, there could be a very aggressive timing and you will have no chance of defending it. Yeah. So that's why we see those Zerglings now crossing the length of the map, trying to find out what exactly Flying did here. Yeah, he's going to find out very, very late. Uh, but he has, the, he has the drone already in position. The drone is in position to take the third base, but he waits until he finds out what's going this on. This is so smart. He's just going to wait until the last second. And he sees it. He sees this. He's going to come up here, and he's going to see the Mothership Core, and he's going to nope, no drone. You're not making that third base right now. Yeah, he should definitely not take it. If he gets the third, now, and he moves back. Yeah, he's not taking it. He sends the drone home. Yeah. The drone you can see on the minimap is now heading back home, so very smart decision here. And this is exactly that thought process that you have to go through when you play on a huge map like this. You don't scout your opponent with overload number one, you don't scout it with overload number two, you know his first position, so you have to wait until you can go through with the strategy. If Crazy would have gone for the third base this early against the build that we see from flying, he would have lost that third no matter what. It is so difficult to defend it against an aggressive Protoss player that starts not with the Forge first, but goes straight into Gateway. This Zergling is uh, so, so important, by the way. He's going to see the robotics. Well, he's already seen it now at the front, but just being able to stay around and see exactly how many Gateways are being added until he's killed with that Zergling is, is so invaluable. He's able to see everything here. He's finally going to target it down, but... That I was like, really nice. I like the block that we had on the ramp. That was really well done. I mean, having those probes over there, blocking uh, the Zirkling, making sure that he can't get into the main base, that was really important. I think we're going to see that Immortal push with uh, with the Colossi coming out from flying now. It's he could just do a standard strong. Immortal push, though, too. The thing with an Immortal push or the Immortal Colossi push is that it's very strong, very difficult to hold. The problem, though, is that he has to cross the length of the map. And especially when you wait for that second Colossus, it takes a long time to get there. With this piling going up, it's looking more likely we're going to see just uh, a faster Immortal push. Yep. Sends out the second one. He's got a tight wall here, so he has to put the Immortal on the outside. This yep. is not a mistake. It's definitely true, but we have only two bases. And this could get very ugly for flying. I mean, Crazy needs to scout this, and he at least knows that there is a probe round, so he's already wondering, what exactly are you doing with this? Heading now into the tech, into Lair. Probe's taken out. He does not, however, wow. see the pylon. <laughs> that was a bitch slap if I've ever seen one. Did you see that? No, I Goes in one. and snipes the one probe with a spine crawler, and the entire torso of the probe falls down to the <laughs> extractor. That was crazy.
The probe never saw this mine crawler coming. I gotta, I gotta fix settings on my observer in PCI. You can see that that sounds awesome. Look at this attack though. Not a single stalker relying only on zealots and two immortals. War prisms he, coming out. He needs a lot more wolf. He needs a lot more zerglings. So what's about the lava? He's getting a lot of spine crawlers. The problem here is that spine crawlers won't be enough. Not against two immortals. Yeah, he's got a huge lava problem. Obviously, with no macro hatchery yeah. here. Remember, this is a not this is the same. Like what Killer did. Killer versus Dino. You know, it's it's different, but it's it's. Let's talk about that in a second. First, Here we, we are go. moving in now with both Immortals doing a lot of damage against all of the Spine Crawlers. He has a double time warp. We don't have enough Zerglings. He doesn't have the Macro Edge there. No injects on there. Crazy is going to fall. Yeah, he is definitely going to fall. He does not have enough Larva. The Immortal is not even... He doesn't even lose the Immortal. The Spine's dead. GT! Flying is back in Code S. Flying is in Code S and... He deserves to be there. I mean, that was really well executed. I love that he, he changed his strategy up entirely going into yeah. Game 3, did a much more aggressive push. It was a little bit similar to what Killer did against Leenog, but Killer played it also with Archons, which Flying did not do. The intention behind the strategy is moving in with two Immortals that take care of Roaches and also take care of Spine Crawlers, and then you just overwhelm your opponent with your Gateway production. You have a lot of Zealots in there, they don't have the attack upgrade, but if your opponent relies only on Zerklings, for example, he cannot really do anything about it unless he has the third hatch in the main base. And even with a third hatch for the lava, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, because that's 300 minerals that you spent on that hatchery, so that helps yeah. you. I mean, that hurts you in your production. He has to use his drones to make spine cars, which are not free, they're expensive too. And his economy was a little bit weak there. That was a really technical build. I think one of the key points here is that pylon not being scouted. If he had seen the pylon, he would have had to wait for the warp prism, then maybe he would have had enough time to get those zerglings out. I think the bigger issue for him really was that he had out and didn't have a Roach one. Against this, you need a Roach one. I've seen several games so far also in Pro League where the Zerg player built the Roach one and has then enough Roaches to deal with this. But even if you have the Roach one, it's not easy. The two Immortals, if microed properly, will have always that wall of Zealots in front of them. So it's very difficult to get close enough once the Protoss player reaches a certain position. And that's what you're aiming for. Yeah. You aim for the choke points where you're... Your Zealots just cram up the choke point, make sure that nothing really gets close, and the entire time the Immortals do the damage and you warp in round after round to send them in. Yeah, the Immortals are just going to be there to target down those spine yeah. crawlers, and there you have it. So Flying is back in Codex, showing some really unique style going into airplay, but in game number three, in typical Flying style, showing us a crazy all-in. We didn't really see crazy scouting as well as he did in the last games. He didn't have enough units on the map to see what was coming there. So a very good play by Flying and he takes down crazy two games in a row now. Very well played and guys we are heading into our next match very soon. But of course we have a five minute break before we start with our second best of three here at the GSL Code. Stay tuned and we'll be back in five.